Lindy from Love Crate Celebrate. Welcome back to our channel where we share all of our DIYs and home renovations. Today I am sharing some concrete planters that we made and how we made some easy, pretty affordable, if not free molds for the concrete planters. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more videos. We tried making these concrete planters and honestly had quite a few of them fail on us. So we learned a lot and I'm gonna share with you everything we learned, all the things that worked really well and some of the things that we learned not to do. So there's gonna be lots of tips and tricks if you've ever wanted to try concrete or if you've ever wanted to try making concrete planters, I'm gonna show you how today. For these planters, all you need is a bag of concrete that costs us less than $10 and a heat gun. Our heat gun was provided by Wagner who also sponsored this video and I'll put a link to that product in the description below. And the last thing we did was gather a whole bunch of plastic containers. We wanted to use these and experiment with different molds. Some of these worked really well, some of them didn't work at all, but we'll show you the three methods that we thought worked best for making concrete molds. So really you can use any plastic container for the outside of your planters, but what we found really interesting was using plastic containers like this Starbucks can or these water bottles that already had interesting designs on the inside. The second mold we wanted to show you today was using something interesting to create your own mold on your planter, like this bath mat that I got from the dollar store that I will use shortly. And then the third method that we're going to show you today is how to cut melamine and use melamine to create your own design or pattern or shape for your concrete planter. So we'll start by showing you how we did the melamine mold, which is the most complicated of the ones we did. So the first thing we did in making this mold was cutting a piece to the height of our planter, which was 11 inches tall. Once we had that board cut, we could cut the individual side panels for the width of our container. We decided to make a hexagon mold and to do this we set our table saw at 22 and a half degrees and then cut six even panels. All of our panels were six inches wide on the outside face and then cut at 22 and a half degrees on both sides. Once we had all of the sides cut out, we used red tuck tape to seal all of the joints and attach the sides together. We kept the angled cuts on the inside so that it will fold nicely into one shape. This one was actually a square box that we created that failed in the end because we opened it too soon and the concrete wasn't set. But it's the same process you would use for any melamine planter mold. The next thing you have to do is decide on a plastic container to go inside your mold and preferably one that spans the entire height of your mold. We used plastic containers like this because we knew it would be easy to remove them with the heat gun after our concrete had set. So for this planter we chose to use an old 2 liter coke bottle. And we had already attached our melamine mold to a melamine base with tuck tape. So next what we wanted to do was drill straight through the two liter pop bottles lid and into the melamine base. This allowed us to screw the pop bottle into place so that it wouldn't move around too much once we added concrete and pressure into the mold. And it also gave us a great drainage hole for after we remove all of this. Once your mold is prepped, you can start mixing the concrete for your concrete planters. We did this by putting our concrete in a wheelbarrow and then adding water to it according to the directions on the bag. You can see the consistency that you want to aim for once we're pouring the concrete into our molds. Before we poured the concrete in, we also sprayed down all of our molds with WD-40 
This helped prevent the concrete from sticking and it kept a nice clean surface between the mold we used and the concrete. We used an extra plastic container to pour the concrete around all sides of the plastic bottle we had inserted. For this mold, we wanted the concrete to go all the way up to the top and stay fairly level with the pop bottle staying centered. So we kind of held it in place as we poured concrete around it. Next, we got our orbital sander and used it on the outside of our concrete planter mold. You can see as we're doing this that it's releasing air from inside. It's allowing all of those little air bubbles to come up and be released and will result in a much nicer finish to our concrete planter. And then the final thing we did before we let our concrete set was use a trowel to smooth off the top surface and make it as smooth as possible before we let it all dry. Okay, so let's move on to the second type of concrete mold that we did. The next two will be fairly quick to explain because it's generally the same process for all of the concrete planters. For my second design, I wanted to try and create my own interesting pattern for the concrete planters, and I did this by using a simple foamy bath mat that I found at the dollar store. I thought that by putting this unique pattern inside one of the simple plastic molds, I might be able to create a really cool pattern or design on the planter. The trick to this one working was finding a really perfectly straight cylinder to put the bath mat into. We tried some that were a little bit angled and it just didn't work at all. Unfortunately, this mold didn't end up working out for us because we took it out a little bit too early again, but we also used a plastic inside that was a little bit too thick for us to melt. So we went with plan B instead. We put that bath mat on the inside of a old peanut butter jar. We used a screw and bolt in the bottom to hold a thin plastic piece in the center and we were ready to pour concrete in. We followed the exact same process to spray everything down with WD-40 and then fill the mold with concrete. If you don't have a sander to help vibrate the bubbles out, we found even just tapping the sides with something like this metal bar that we were using was enough to release some of the air from inside. Okay, now we can move on to our third and easiest mold to use. This is just finding a container that already has some character built into it and using that as the mold for your planter. This is the easiest process of the three. We used the bottom of our water bottle for our first container, sprayed it down with WD-40 and filled it up with concrete. For this one, we used an ice cream tub to go on the inside. Instead of screwing this one down to the bottom, since it didn't have a lid, we just used some wood blocks to give it some weight and hold it in place. It won't have the built-in drainage that the other planters have, but we can create drainage with some rocks in the bottom. Once your moldings are done and your concrete is in them, let them sit somewhere safe where they can dry and it's nice and warm. Make sure to follow the directions on the bag of your concrete because if you don't, you will likely have something like this happen. This was our fail after we opened one of our molds a bit too early. When we actually waited long enough for the concrete to set, our mold had opened up just like this on its own without us having to do anything. 
it popped open a little bit and we just easily removed both sides of the mold because of that WD-40 we had sprayed it down with. Then when we were ready to remove that inside plastic bottle, it doesn't slide out easily because of all of the bumps and texture inside the concrete planter. So we used our Wagner Ferno 300 to apply a little bit of heat so that we could easily melt and then twist the plastic out. Once it was loose enough, the piece just slid out nicely and then we were able to turn the concrete planter over and remove the screw from earlier so that we would have that drainage hole. And then we did the same thing with the rest of our molds using our Wagner heat gun to gently heat the plastic and remove it from the concrete. When it came to some of the molds that were thinner on the bottom than the top, we needed to release and open up more of the plastic before we could slide it off. What we found worked really well was using a utility knife to gently score the plastic. Then when we applied heat to the plastic, it automatically found that weak spot and split the plastic exactly where we wanted it to. One other trick that we found helpful when removing and heating the plastic was that if you had any plastic sticking out over the top of your concrete planter, cutting it off made it easier for the heat gun to melt and shrink the plastic afterwards. If you're wondering how that final bath mat project worked out, we simply removed the outer plastic layer and then it was really easy to remove the bath mat. We just had to grab one spot and twist it off and it created a really cool pattern on the planter. And finally, if you want to seal your planters and protect them, I recommend using one of these concrete sealers. This is the one we used and we find it has worked really well in the past. And here is how all four of those concrete planters turned out. We had a few mistakes along the way, but I think the planters we ended up with are super cute and I would definitely try making something like this again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions about making your own concrete planters, please drop those in too and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks for watching.